Hi and welcome to this tutorial which is a quick look at the cloth tool in 3D Coat. So we'll begin this tutorial by um, uh, using the voxel sculpting mode on the main menu. Click that option and from this secondary menu then we're going to choose this figure down here and what we'll create is a sort of collision object or base mesh which we can use then to create our cloth object. So once your character's loaded like this and we'll come down here to the cutoff tool and using the key here I'll then just start to cut off the parts of this mesh that I don't actually need. So just cutting the arms off and remove the legs and remove the head so I've got something like this. Okay so what I'm going to do here is just quickly revert to a file which I've opened before. Here we are and as you can see it's pretty much the same it's just cut off slightly more evenly and what I'm going to do now is create the cloth object um, which sits on top of this torso. To do that we'll go over to the uh, Retopo room and as you can see here I've created one already and this isn't a tutorial on, on how to create uh, how to do retopology so um, I've already gone and I'll put a link in the description below to show you where a tutorial is just to show you quickly how to do this. So back in the sculpt room, having created my retopo mesh, then I'm going to import that retopo mesh into the sculpt room now via the cloth tool here. So as I do that, I'm going to use the options which it gives me to say pick from retopo. And there it is. Now it's actually intersecting inside the model, so what I'll do is just scale my Retopo mesh up so we can see it clearly, like so. Now once I've done that, and just a quick note before you make a start trying to work on the cloth side of things here, is just remove the um, symmetry on the, um, on the cursor here. You can see that I've got symmetry enabled those small dots there coming together so you can just um, hit S on the keyboard and disable symmetry. So once that's done I can then go over to the options here and start to play around with this cloth object. Now before you start my advice is to zero out all the fields here in the options panel and the reason for that is if you start off with values in here then you're going to find it um, a little bit confusing as to what's going on with this um, cloth tool. It's better to begin with zero values and gradually add and then you'll understand the effect of these um, properties here uh, and the effect they have actually on, on this um, object. So as you can see I've gone ahead and I've zeroed out all the fields and I've also unchecked stick to current object. And the first thing I'll do is just hit start which means I'll start the cloth simulation. So when I do that you can see here that my cursor is still there, it's moving around but it, nothing seems to have happened. Well that's because everything's zeroed out. I can still move this around slightly but it's very very difficult to do that because there's no prop, you know, there's no um, parameters here allowing me to do that much with it. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but it is moving around slightly, but it's very coarse and very unworkable at this stage. So I'll end the sim there, and the first thing I'll do now is to subdivide using this button, which gives me a few more polygons here to work with, and then I'll hit start again. Now you can see that the, this object is now conforming much better to the underlying torso geometry. 
If I start to try and move this now, again, you still can't see much happening. A little bit more than before, but still unworkable. And not very convincing as cloth at the moment. So I'll end the simulation again, and you'll notice that the cloth object is now conforming a lot tighter to the um, underlying object. So the next stage is to start playing with these settings. I'll start off with the gravity setting and I'll put this now to uh, 0 0.05. Start off with low settings and then work your way up. And I'll hit start some again and start to move this around. Still not much happening. But you can see I'm getting some creases here when I'm pulling and then it quickly unfolds itself and uncreases itself because of the gravity pulling down on this object now. So slight improvement. Let's end the sim and subdivide again so we can get a little bit more detail in this because one of the reasons this isn't working is because the mesh is just still too coarse. So let's, having subdivided, let's start again this time pull again. Now you can see a difference. Now you can see that I'm getting some creases on here. The gravity is still affecting it and it's still slowly pulling down. Gravity is still affecting it and pulling down on here. But at least now I can get some creases into the cloth object. As I'm spinning it around. Now one of the issues I've got here is that as I'm pulling on the cloth object, it's straightening itself out. So if I want to have these creases in, I've got to end the simulation really quickly to hold those in position. Otherwise, they'll just straighten out. But you can see here that I've started to get some creases developing in this object. So one of the things I'll do is subdivide again because I want more creases in here. And I'll increase the friction, so how it, the friction between the, um, the uh, cloth object, and I'll re reduce the gravity to zero. Start the simulation again, and now what happens is I get a much slower, uh, it's still gravity still working at uh, working on the object, but in a much much slower way to the point where it kind of just starts off pulling down again and then it kind of freezes. But you can see those creases are holding in the object. So now I can start to pull this around and try and get some or a creased look that I'm sort of happy with. When I'm happy with it, I'll just stop the simulation, turn the object around, and start from this side, and start pulling this around on this side as well. Now what you do find is that sometimes the front may be smoothing out. As you're working on the back here, the front may smooth out. Let's check that out. No, it's still okay. It's still not too bad. So. I'm quite happy with that at the moment. So I can start the sim again and maybe continue adding more creases and more folds. Like so. End the sim. And that's one thing that you've got to get used to when you're using this tool is, is starting and stopping all the time. Now I can subdivide this again to, to smooth it out and just watch what happens now with this subdivision level start the sim. This time when I press I get much tighter wrinkles and creases. So now it's becoming a little bit harder to manage in terms of the, the, the greater the movement that I do the more creases I get and it's harder to manage as an object and as a simulation. So probably I've gone on too much and sort of over creased this to make it look overly wrinkled. This is nice on the back, but if you look at the front, because I haven't touched the back part yet at this new subdivision level, but at the front 
I started to try and move it around and I got these well it's it's a little bit too much so I'll end the sim there and I'll call it done and what I'll do now is go over oh sorry go over to my um, to retopo which in a sense takes this object that I've just deformed using the cloth tool and sends it back to the retopo room so to retopo and you notice we're now in the retopo room it's now a high res mesh, which is, let me sell, use my select tool here as faces, which is now an object which I can select if I just double click on the mesh. And I can export this object now out as its own cloth object. So I'll do that now, just go over to tutorial and save this object out, replace the one I've already done. And if I go back to the sculpt room, you'll see my options are still here, but that's because uh, the tool is still selected. If I click off the tool, the cloth tool and its properties disappears. So now I can create a new layer, give this layer some resolution here, and import, hit spacebar, import this cloth object. So this is the object which I just exported, you see. Good creases and folds on the back, more creased and dense on the front. And what I'll do is I'll use these import settings. Now you can see here that it's giving me some options. Let's zoom in closer. It's given me a thickness where I can use these uh, parameters here to change the inner and outer thicknesses of my object. So if I try something like this, I'll get quite a thick mesh which gets formed between. So I can also import without voxelization. In other words, I can bring it in as a surface object or by leaving it unchecked, uh, will will create a voxelized object. So let's just go with that for now. Hit apply. Say yes. Use a different tool to deselect and you can see now that this object here is on its own layer. I can turn the t-shirt on and off and I can also come in now and start to use all of the voxel tools for sculpting purposes. So if I need to do any major edits to this mesh, I can hit spacebar, choose move, make sure my cursor is big enough, and then I can start to pull this around. Just make sure my normal back faces is turned off. Start to pull this around and maybe get it tighter to the skin. Or make it hang down more as a t-shirt. So I've I'm not limited by what the cloth tool did. It just gave me a really good starting point and a lot of um, creases and folds, etc., which would have taken me a long time to sculpt in. Now, we can correct as well some of the folds which we've got here on the front by using the smooth tool here, reducing my pen size and strength of the tool. I can come in here and start to maybe get rid of some of the additional creases which I'm not too happy with. There is quite a lot on here actually that where it did kind of over crease it because that subdivision level was a little bit too high. If I'd have left it at the previous one I think it would have, we'd have got a much nicer result. But the point is is that you can come in after the effect and start to change it around and add your own creases in using these folds and creases as a guide. So for example, if I just use this build brush here, come in, reduce it down slightly and start to, to work into the um, object. And you can see I can start to create my own creases and folds. And of course, 
I can come over to my uh, vox tree here and change from a voxel object to a poly object, a surface object, and then I get a brand new set of tools, which are surface-based tools. So you can see, oh, sorry, didn't do it. There we go. There we can see the different tools that I can use now, as well as all these presets. So you can see here, this is pretty much like ZBrush when I'm working now. And then hitting the shift button and come in and just start to smooth out those additional strokes which I made. Now at any time I can increase the resolution of this object as well, give me more polygons to work with, but I'm pretty happy with that as it is. So that's just a quick basic look at the um, cloth tool and how you can use it to start off your, your uh, cloth objects. Let's just quickly take this over into the um, render room. Turn off the real time in it, and I'll just throw a couple of shaders on here. So we've got the torso, and I'll use uh, just two basic ones. So I've got the torso, which will make white, and the cloth object, which, which I can make this yellow color. You can see there, that's not too bad. It's very little work. I got some quite nice um, results. Five minutes work in the um, using the sculpt, sculpt tools and the cloth object combined together. Um, we 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 got some pretty nice results. And obviously, at any time, I can come back in here and start to smooth out and modify my sculpt. and work on it even more. And at this stage, once I'm happy with it, I can go back and, and re apologize this to get all this crease in, and fold information and bake that down into a normal map, uh, etc. And use my low poly object again to, to, to bake all this detail back into a low poly object. Okay. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.